Trump's administration welcomed designates of Nigeria as a country of concern. President Donald Trump's administration for the first time recently designated Nigeria as a country of particular concern, CPC, for violations of religious freedom. One of the ten highlighted by the United States Department for failing to stem the persecution and discrimination of faith groups. Nigeria is the first democracy to be labeled a CPC for particularly severe violation of religious freedom, a designation that opens it up to economic sanction. According to the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, the West African nation and nine others we have been singled out for engaging in or tolerating systematic ongoing violation of religious freedom. The United States will continue to work tirelessly to end religiously motivated abuses and persecution around the world and to help ensure that everywhere at all time has the right to live according to the dictates of conscience, Secretary Pompeo said in a statement. The designation was welcomed by the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, USCIRF, a bipartisan federal entity that has recommended Nigerians' inclusion on the CPC list since 2009, including in its most recent report released in the month of April. Religious freedom conditions in Nigeria remained poor in 2019 with both state and societal perpetrated violation. USCRIF wrote in its 2020 report highlighting widespread security issues contributing to both Christian and Muslims population being opened to attacks of intercommunal and military violence. The Nigerian government failed to effectively improve justice and security for its citizens and was unsuccessful in addressing the immense need for accountability and reconciliation around past conflicts. Recall also that Jubilee campaign on the 18th of November 2020 released a very horrific and terrifying report titled Nigeria. This genocide is loading, finding a reasonable basis to believe crimes against humanity occurred a report to the International Criminal Court about the violation of human rights since 2013 till 2020. According to them, violence that has taken place in Nigeria, Middle Belt, is spiraling out of control, costing the, the lives of thousands of civilians and destabilizing the country and region. The violence is often characterized as an intercommunal conflict between herders and farmers over natural resources. However, that well-worn label is now obsolete due to the increasing asymmetry in attacks, as well as the steadily increasing frequency and organizational planning of Fulani militant attacks against civilian targets. Although it is inarguably that violence is being perpetrated by both party groups in the conflict and all perpetrators must be held accountable, the evidence shows that rising radicalization and militancy among the Fulani group is associated with an increase in asymmetry and savagery of the violence perpetrated by Fulani militants in Nigeria. The sharp rise in attacks in recent years is uncharacterized of the historic header farmer tension uh, that has characterized the region for decades and centuries.
Thank you for listening to this news. Hmm. Trump's administration welcomed designates of Nigeria as a country of concern. Yeah. You see, I'm happy that U.S. is now uh, is is aware of what President Muhammadu Buhari's administration has actually impacted. I thank God they have, they have, they have, they have, they have shown concern to all the happenings, all the happenings and all that has happened within President Momo Boris's administration. There is no, there is nothing that happened in Boris's administration that never passed through the ears of the United States of America, both especially those in the international organization. I'm very happy of that. Why did I say so? You see, um, Bwari, Bwari, I will tell you, we think that he will, he has, he has um, a one-time military um, head of state. We will still go away with with all of his atrocities, just like he did when he was a military leader. Unknown to him that that was when he was a military leader. It is only the military administration can commit all sorts of atrocities and still go away with it. But unknown to him that this is a civilian government. This is a democratic system of government. A government that gives individuals the right and opportunity to come out and air their view. That give people opportunity to interpret and speak up. They give people the opportunity to defend themselves in the public without any form of harassment. It is this, demo, this, uh, this democrat, democratic system of government that permitted, protest, that permitted and considered protest. Buhari doesn't know all of this. He thought that he is still in the military system of government. That is why all of his actions still centers on autocracy. Buhari ruled this administration with autocratic power, with autocratic system. So, the moment he completes his, 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 his tenure, he should be prepared. Because even the Americans will join in probing of President Mubari. His atrocities is enormous. But they, we, we should not be even mentioning them. Mm -hmm. Are we to talk about the insecurity? Are we to talk about the flatness? Or uh, uh, the flatness or, or economic meltdown of, of the Nigerian economy? Hmm? What are we, to, in fact, they are just enormous. Everyone is just maintaining a low profile because they just want him to quietly complete his administration. Then he will now face the country. I thought he knows how to lead a protest. He alone knows how to lead a revolution. He will now see what is called the mother of protest. The father and mother of protest. The mother and father of probe. He haven't seen anything. If care is not taken, President Mubarak will go to jail after his administration. So he should just warm up. It's so, it's, it's, it's so, it's so bad that a person like him at this age will be going to jail. It's not going to survive it. It's not going to survive it. Because as of this age, as of this age, he's supposed to be relaxing at home. But because of greed and selfishness, selfishness that is what has brought him back to government. And that is what will permit me to make reference to what Miyeti Anla Kato Breeders Association said concerning who to, who, to, who, to, who to vote in 2023. Do you understand? The president of Miyeti Anla made a very strong point that I so much concord with. He said, the time has come for us to do away with the, with, with what? With the old cargoes 
And who are the old cargoes? The old cargoes are those old, uh -huh. old people, old men, old women over 60, 70 who are contesting to be president and governors, who are weak to run a country, who are supposed to be at home relaxing and be eating the little money that they have made. Instead, they, 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 they decided to, to, to squeeze themselves inside the government. So the time has come for us to do away with them. The time has come for us to show them the way out of Asorok. They are not supposed to be in Asorok because they, they have been in Asorok is to... Oh, shit. My viewers, please, you have to come in and air your own opinion. All right? Deem it free to leave your comments below the comment box. Click on the subscription button as well as the bell button to receive more updates. Thank you.